Hello, I'm Ollie. This is Criminal Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, uh, a bit of all of that, it's my weekly wrap up. Okay, so normal format today, I will talk about what I have been reading, I'll talk about what I'm going to be reading, um, and then I'll talk a little bit about the channel as well. So videos that have gone up in the past week and ones that are scheduled for the week to come. Um, so firstly, um, the books. So I've had a good, another good reading week. Um, I hope you have too. Um, so I've got through seven books this week. Um, so I am, um, I'm closing in on my, um, my hundredth book in my hundred book challenge. So I'm up to book 90, well, I've just finished book 91. Um, unfortunately, the next book I'm going to be reading um, is not a book I own. Um, it's one I've got out of the library from my book club. Um, so it will not count towards the 100 book challenge. Um, but still, even after that, you know, I've only got nine books to go. So I'm pretty confident um, I am going to finish it this month in March. Um, right. So what have I read? So first up was book 14 um, in the Edge series by George G. Gilman. So Big Gold. Um, so this was... Um, I mean, they're all pretty silly, these edge books, to be honest with you. This one was quite fun. So this one centred around um, a kind of travelling carnival um, that had a huge amount of gold with it. And, and it was like an exhibit in the carnival that people would pay pay money to come and see this huge amount of... It was supposed to be like a million dollars worth of gold, I think. Um, and Edge was hired to um, to protect the money. Um, so there's a bit of a, there was a bit of a mystery element to it that was quite fun. Um, there were also um, tigers and things like that in the in the travelling show, um, which proved quite fun. And you can probably imagine what happened to some of the bad guys, um, given there were tigers about. So yeah, a, another kind of throwaway but quite entertaining, um, brutal western from George D. Gilman. Um, after that, um, I finished the Blackwater Saga by Michael McDowell. So I read book six in that, which was Rain, um, which is fantastic. So. Um, I've done a I've done a full review of the whole the whole six book series, um, which will be going up on Thursday of this week. So look out for that. But it's it's a fantastic series. It's not perfect. There are there are, you know there's there's one thing in particular I call out in the review that I thought could have been handled better, um, but generally speaking, it's just great fun. So it's a you know it's a it's a rich Southern Gothic with really interesting characters, um, a great setting, um, and a really weird um, horror elements kind of woven into this this family saga um and the final book rain was a was a fitting end to the series so um yeah thoroughly recommended i really really enjoyed it um after that i read a book which i didn't enjoy uh which was um arkham asylum or to give it its full name batman arkham asylum a serious house on serious earth um by grant morrison and dave mckean now i'm sure i must have read this uh, in fact i'm pretty sure i did read it back when it came out in the in the late 80s when did it come out 89 or something like that i think uh yeah 89 um so this was you know when it came out this was a this was a big deal this this comic um so it was one of the first um i think it was one of the first things that was published as a standalone graphic novel rather than you know the kind of trade paperback like this being reprints of of comics that have been published as individual issues um so yeah it was a big deal it was it was critically lauded at the time and it was hugely successful as well it sold you know i can't remember like a half a million copies or something like that so it was it was really successful and it was it was right at the start of the boom in comics being taken a bit more seriously um so you know coming fairly soon after things like watchmen and, and the dark knight returns um both of which I love. Um, it was, you know, it was it was a big deal. Um, but I have to say, reading it again, I, I really didn't like it. It's um, so the the story is that um, basically the 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 inmates of Arkham Asylum have taken it over, um, and Batman goes in to try and wrest control back. Um, and, and what happened? And, and that basically <laughs> that's the whole plot. What what happens thereafter is he has encounters with different villains that he's uh, he's you know captured and imprisoned in the past um and there's loads of kind of psychological stuff about batman's you know backstory and, and that kind of thing 
it's just full of like really heavy symbolism and like psychoanalysis and and um but my main and, and so so yeah it just felt it felt dated it, and it felt like it was trying too hard to be adult um you know like it was really really trying to be grown up and you know it's got some really horrible stuff in it um and it felt like that was done for effect um whereas you know some of the things that preceded it that, that i've mentioned so watchmen and um and dark knight returns i think managed to be far more adult in terms of the maturity of their themes um without uh you know without having to result a resort to shock tactics i also the other problem i have with it so i mean artistically it's quite interesting and it is quite well done and i do think dave mckean is is a good artist um but i have to say i i like I like my Dave McKean on the cover. So I love it when Dave McKean does a, you know, a really nicely painted cover. Um, when he's actually um, doing a story, I find it quite difficult to, to follow. Um, I reviewed or talked about in my wrap up for February, I talked about the Daredevil um, Born Again um, graphic novel or collection, which I read, which has a much more traditional comic book style. Um, and I think works as a comic book much better as a result of that. Um, whereas, you know, this just feels overblown and, and like the story, it feels like it's trying too hard. Um, and the other thing I found, I don't know if you can see this, they've used this weird kind of spiky red font for, um, for the Joker whenever he's speaking. And I found it incredibly difficult to read. I don't know if that's just because I'm getting old. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I just, I really struggled to read, to literally to read some of the texts. Um, and the other thing I would say is, um, I mean, if you look at this font on the cover and, and indeed on the back as well, it just feels really, really like late 80s, early 90s. Um, it just, you know, there are certain things about this book that just felt very, very dated. Um, so yeah, I was, I was expecting to enjoy this um, and I, and I didn't at all really. Um, like I say, I'm sure I read it back in the day. I may even have a copy of it up in the attic, but this was one I found in the charity shop, or it might have been the library actually, a while ago, and it was dead cheap. So I thought, oh, I'll buy that and, and read it at some point. So yeah, I, I was disappointed. Um, okay, after that, I read um, Privileged Conversation by Evan Hunter. Um, so better known as Ed McBain, who I've talked about on the channel before. Um, so he wrote a number of novels as, as Evan Hunter as well. I read this for March Mystery Madness. Um, so I talked last week about another book by the same author I read. So that was Beauty and the Beast, uh, which he wrote as Ed McBain. So this is a, it, it, it has definitely got mystery elements to it. So I wasn't sure if it was going to be much of a mystery, but it, but it is. Um, but it's probably more of a psychological thriller. And it was it was interesting and parts of it were fantastic but overall it, it, it fell a bit flat for me so it's about a um a psychiatrist in new york who um happens across this young woman so he's like in his mid-40s um and he's strolling through central park one day on his lunch break or something like that and there's this young woman on a bike um, who goes past him and kind of catches his eye because she's very attractive um, and she then gets mugged by this guy who tries to well, when succeeds in stealing her bike and the the psychiatrist tries to come to her, her aid doesn't manage to stop the mugger um but you know looks after her and you know makes sure she's okay and subsequently they start a relationship basically so he's he's married with kids um and as i say in his 40s she is a dancer um in her 20s um and yeah they start this affair and and it feels so this came out when it's coming up this came out in 1996 and it really feels like that kind of wave of movies that came out you know in the years preceding that like fatal attraction uh, and um basic instinct um so you could see in the movie you could see michael douglas <laughs> playing this guy um and Evan Hunter knows this and he goes out of his way to say that it's, you know, to, to, to say that it's not like that. There's even a bit where someone literally says this is, you know, this is, I think that, I think it's the dancer that the woman says to the psychiatrist, don't worry, this isn't going to be like fatal, fatal attraction. I'm not going to boil your kids' bunnies. Um, 
and he makes repeated reference. He re refers more than once to the Sharon Stone character um, in uh, Basic Instinct and, and the you know the infamous flashing scene. Um, so he 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 totally knew that he was going over ground that had you know had been gone over many times. Um, but he for the most part he does it really well. So he's a fantastic writer of dialogue. There's some brilliant dialogue in this. And even though with this relationship, kind of nothing's happening in that, you know, they are just having an affair. Um, he, he builds real tension into it and it's really readable and enjoyable for the most part. The other thing um, that was very enjoyable about the book is so, so the dancer is appearing in Cats, the musical. Um, and there's a fantastic scene where um, the psychiatrist and one of his friends go to see Cats. And he just completely rips it apart and just talks about what an absolutely atrocious musical it is. I, d I do wonder if the producers of the movie version of Cat, if they'd read this book, if they might have had second thoughts about, about doing the movie, because his analysis of it is very scathing, but absolutely spot on. Um, and it's worth noting, so, so Evan Hunter, um, a number of times tried to get theatrical projects off the ground and, and they all failed. Um, and he writes in some of his other books about you know about the theatre and things. He clearly had a bit of a bugbear about it because it was something he'd you know he was tremendously successful as a novelist and also as a screenwriter. So he wrote the screenplay for Hitchcock's The Birds, um, but theatre was something he really wanted to do and he consistently failed to do it. And you, you feel like some of his annoyance is coming out in this book. Um, so yeah, the first two thirds of it is is really good, but then when it gets to the last third, there's there's stuff going on and you, and you know there's a bit of a backstory with the with the dancer um, and she's had some trauma in her past and it's just really obvious what it is um so there was, it felt it felt like he was trying there was trying to be a mystery there but there was there was really no mystery at all and then there's another element and I won't go into it because I don't want to spoil it but there's another element that comes up towards the end which is like proper traditional crime story type stuff and really really tense and then it just kind of goes nowhere or it goes in the direction you just completely don't expect and which for me didn't work so the book ended up um the, the book ended up falling a bit flat um it was you know it was very good at times um but overall i, I wasn't a huge fan I, I gave it three stars so um, after that i read a, another book for march mystery madness so this was the second of the may gray novels by uh george simidon which i've read for march mystery madness i talked about the other one last week um so this was um the carter uh, of la providence which was about a um, a body that's found kind of by a canal and La Providence is, is a boat on the canal and the carter is a, is a guy who works on the boat. Um, I, it wasn't a term I was familiar with, but it's it's like a, somebody who works on barges, basically. Um, so there's yeah this body that turns up and, and May Gray, the detective, is investigating, um, you know, what's happened. And the, I've read, th this is the third May Gray book I've read. So I've read, um, I read the one that I read last week, which I thought was pretty good. I read the very first one, uh, uh, Peter the Latvian, um, a few years ago, which I really, really liked. This one I just didn't get on with at all, and I don't know if it, I was just not in the right mood for it at the time, but I just found it really hard to follow. Um, I don't know if you, you know, people out there get that as well, but sometimes with a book, it just, for whatever reason, it's just not sinking in, and I keep on forgetting who the characters are and having to refer back and things like that, and that, that, that was definitely happening with this book. Um, so yeah, it, it didn't work for me at all. Um, it was, you know, there was definitely good stuff in there. Um, and I think if I'd read it at a different time, I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more. But for whatever reason, it just didn't work for me. Um, after that was another um, book in a, a, a series that I'm kind of working through. So that was Meteor Menace, which is the, the third in the Bantam editions, at least the third of the Doc Savage novels by uh, Kenneth Robeson. Um, which is great fun. So, so this one has um, Doc Savage and his crew um, in, I think it's in Chile initially, and then in Tibet as well. Um, and there's this there's this gang of uh, kind of acolytes who've got this meteor which sends people mad. Um, so Doc Savage is like running all over the world, trying to, a trying to save this woman. So there's this woman in it um, whose name I forget now, but who consistently, whenever she's mentioned. Um, the author puts the word attractive in front of her name. She's always like the attractive um, Jane Smith or whatever. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely of its time in terms of its uh, treatment of 
uh, of female characters. Um, but yeah, a really enjoyable pulp adventure. Lots of running around, lots of interesting gadgets and things like that, which uh, uh, which Doctor Savage has at his disposal. Um, and his crew are great fun, particularly um, Monk, who's this kind of rotund, um, uh, gruff. Um, guy who I think he's an archaeologist or a scientist or something he's a chemist that's right he's a chemist who helps Doc out who's got this pet pig called habeas corpus um, who plays a quite a big part in, in the books so yeah just very silly but very entertaining um, and then I've just finished um, this Hydra by uh, Matt Wazilowski, um the first of two of the six stories series that I'm going to be reading for March Mystery Madness um, so the second one is Changeling, which I'll probably get to sometime in the coming week. Um, so, yeah, this was great. So so I did a review of the first book in the series, which is just called Six Stories, um, a while ago. And this follows the, exactly the same format as that. So it's a pod, like a true crime podcast where the host interviews six different people who've been involved in a, in a historic crime. And in this case, the crime is this young woman um, who murdered her... Um, mother stepfather and sister or stepsister half sister um so yeah she went went crazy one night basically and, and killed them all and is now in a in a, a mental hospital um and it's about what happened what led up to that and it's him you know the, the host interviewing different people um so these books are just fantastically readable they just there's something about them that's just I think and I think it's largely down to the format. I think Matt Wazilowski is a good writer in terms of you know his prose is very very readable, um, but there's something about the format that's just really gripping and works really well, and it just allows him to build up quite an intricate mystery, and to be deliberately the fact that he's interviewing you know each section of the book is a different person's view of what happened, so that allows him to obscure information and things like that without it being really obvious that he's obscuring information or without without you as the reader feeling like you're being cheated. Um, so yeah, it works. It works brilliantly. Um, so this one had some really interesting discussion of um, like internet conspiracy theories and like weird, um, like spooky games that people play on the internet and things like that. And I Googled a couple of them and they are real things. Um, so yeah, there's some, there's some really weird cool weird internet stuff in there there's also and, and this was a theme in the previous book as well so quite a lot about bullying and things like that um and an interesting um there's a really interesting character who is a like a rock star who's kind of fallen out of favor um so some some interesting stuff about him as well and about the nature of fame in the modern world um so yeah just a, just a really enjoyable and, and gripping book um i read it in like a day basically um and yeah thoroughly enjoyed it and i'm looking forward to reading the next one um so yeah if you've not read these books i do recommend them it doesn't appear that you need to read them in order there's not really any references back in this one to the first one it does feel like and i've said this about the first book so there's this sense in the first book that there might be something supernatural happening but you never know you know it's one of those things where he gets the balance just right there could be a rational explanation for the events or it could be that there's something really weird going on and you never know um and he does that in this one as well and i do wonder if it feels like that's going to be a consistent theme in the books and i do wonder if he's kind of building up this bigger because you know each of the first two books is about a completely different case but it feels like he's building up this bigger picture of uh, you know weird goings on in the world it's a bit like the x-files in a way um so yeah, really enjoyed it. Looking forward to the next one. I've got all the all, all the current books in the series, so um, I think I may well be reading more of those next month as well. Um, so yeah, that's what I've read so far. That's the seven books I got through this week. Um, up next, um, as referenced, is my book club book, which is Violetta by Isabel Allende. So something co completely different and um, off topic for the channel. Um, but um, yeah, this is the book that was picked this week. So uh, sorry, this month. So. I'll be reading this. I've read the first couple of pages and it seems quite readable so far. I'm always a bit worried with things like this that they're going to be too hard, too hard for someone like me who reads trash. But um, yeah, it, it seems very readable so far. And last month's book, book, uh, book club pick was Great Circle by Maggie Shipston, which was my favourite read of the month by far. So, um, so hopefully this will be another good one. Um, so I'll be reading that next. I'm hoping I'll get that finished either this weekend or on Monday. Um, and then I've got um, Changeling, the next book in the Six Stories series to read. Um, 
I've I will then that will be I will have read six books for um, for March Mystery Madness then so I do have a couple of other possible mysteries I might read um, or I might not haven't really decided yet I've got the second book in the Elric saga um, A Sailor on the Seas of Fate which I think I'm definitely going to read um, and then I've got some my kind of normal pulp stuff um, so anyone who's watched the channel for any length of time will know there's four pulp series that I'm reading through so I've read my edge book for this month uh, but I've got a survivalist book, a um, a gore book and a executioner book to read. So looking forward to those. So I'll definitely be reading a couple of those this uh, this week as well, I think. Um, in terms of the channel then. Um, so in the last week um, we have had. So I did a review of The Drive-In by Joe R. Lansdale. Um, and I did a uh, I did the Canterbury Tales um book tag which was created by AJ Dunn Reads and Writes which was a, a really lot for a tag video it was really long it was like half an hour long um, so those have gone up and then I did a library tour of some of the crime books um, in my personal library um, and then yesterday I had a video about the um, the Berthier book tag which I created and some of my motives behind creating that tag um, so if you haven't watched that um, look out but that's going to be my I, t I talk in that video about what my next challenge when I finish the 100 book challenge is going to be um, and that's going to be about um, reading people's um, birth year books so the, the books that people have named as as their favourite books from their birth year in, uh, in doing the birth year book tag um, I'm going to start working my way through those when I finish my 100 book challenge um, I didn't say as well so obviously this being March it's March of the Mammoths too so I will be reading um, Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry as my um, my mammoth for March. Um, I'm going to be I'm going to be reading that as book 100 in my 100 book challenge. So I'm I'm well on track. So it's nine, I'm on book 91. So I think, assuming I keep up a similar pace, then by this time next week I'll be on book 95, 96. So I have a few more to go, and then I'll be able to start um, Lonesome and Dove well before the end of the month. Um, and that will be a reread. Oh, sorry, not reread. A buddy read. Um, with Bookworm, uh, Bookworm Adventure Girl, so Jolene over over at that channel. So really looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, that 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 will be the last book in my hundred book challenge. So yeah, looking looking forward to getting it finished. Um, so coming up this week on the channel then. Um, so uh, I've got a um, a Sunday bollocks video going up tomorrow, um, which is about popular fiction versus literary fiction and my my thoughts on that. So look out for that if that sounds interesting. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a Monday video or not. That's kind of a day I let myself have off. Um, so if I if I think of something to do, then um, I may do something. I've got a video I've started working on, um, but it's quite an it's a bit more ambitious than the videos I normally do in terms of the number of books I'm going to be talking about in it. So I don't know exactly when when that one will be finished, but it may go up sometime next week, either on Monday or Friday, if I've got it done. Um, on Wednesday, I've doing a what's on my kindle um tag so rather than doing a library tour uh, i'm going to do a, well, a virtual library tour of my kindle so talking about a few books on my kindle um, and then thursday as i said i've got a review of the blackwater saga um by michael mcdowell going up so i, I really really like that series so um, if you if you like southern gothic and you like a bit of weird um i think that's a, a series you would very much enjoy so look out for my review of that um so yeah that's that's my week wrapped up I um, hope you've all had good reading weeks, as I say. hope you're all well. Um, do let me know what you've been reading. Let me know if you've read any of the books I've talked about. Um, and yeah, as always, keep safe and well, and I will speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.